Good morning, and welcome to StreetWeb Webinar's presentation of Motorola's Mesh AP7181 Outdoor Wireless Broadband Access Point. Today we'll be presenting you with information, an overview, and training regarding the 7181, a new product from Motorola, and one that promises to provide all kinds of new options. Uh, I'm going to go through a few slides about uh, StreetWave, telling you about how we can supply you with the product and the services that we provide. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to our presenter today, Rosalie Debona from uh, Debona, excuse me, product manager for the Mesh Network um, Division at Motorola. First, let me tell you a little bit about StreetWave. Uh, StreetWave is a full-service, value-added distributor of equipment for the broadband wireless industry. We provide such services as licensed and unlicensed spectrum products and focus on wireless broadband. Um, one good thing about StreetWave is that if you call into our sales representatives, whether it's about Motorola or other products, our, our sales representatives are both trained and experts at what they do, and so they can help you design systems, they can help you plan, they can even tell you a little bit about what you should and should not be doing uh, in the field. Uh, all of our, our uh, service people are Motorola trained and certified, and StreetWave is there to add you with value for all of your wireless equipment needs. You can reach us at 888-604-5234 or anytime on the web at www.streakwave.com. If you take a look at some of the things that we can do for you in relation to Motorola and other products, StreakWave will always provide you with free path analysis and calculation. This means that if you need to know whether something is going to work from one place to another, you can join us and ask us, and we'll be happy to plan that out for you. As I noted, our, our account managers are trained and knowledgeable. Ordering is very easy either from the web or by our account managers, though we encourage you to use the account managers because they do provide value which you won't find anywhere else. We also have three locations in the United States, which means that we can get product to you very quickly, and we can ship it internationally. Uh, we always do stock products, so you can find things right on our shelves. We promise we stock both products and accessories, and we can help you facilitate your FCC licensing for each pathway. Motorola products and StreetWave fit into a lot of different applications and solutions, including enterprise, education, government, hospitality, healthcare, security, service providers, and more. And many of you are WISPs, and uh, we pro provide a wide range of solutions for WISPs as well. Uh, we make your technical solutions happen. We're very happy to have today with us Ro Rosalie Labona from uh, Motorola. She's a very experienced product manager in the Mesh AP7181 Outdoor Wireless Group, and she's been working in the industry for over 25 years, so she's got a good background to tell you all about the new product and the past products and the technology. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to Rosalie, let her tell you about Motorola and about the products that that she's going to present today. Hey, Rosalie? Thank you. Uh, appreciate it, Richard. Uh, my name is Rosalie Bavona. I'm the product manager for the AP7181. Been with the Mesh product team for a long time. Been doing wireless for a long time, like Richard said. Um, today I'm going to cover the product overview of the 7181. Um, and just concentrate on some great selling features and some competitive information. And we'll leave some time at the end to uh, answer questions. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we've actually combined our whole indoor-outdoor group together under one P&L. We call it the Motorola Wireless Broadband Portfolio. And what that means is we took the outdoor mesh guys, we took the enterprise indoor wireless LAN team, and all the handhelds and point-to-point uh, -point, uh, technologies, which was the old orthogon guys outdoors, and the canopy guys that are outdoors. So we have point-to-point, -point, multi-point, mesh, and indoor wireless LAN all combined under the same group. And what that means uh, for Motorola and for our end-user customers is that we have now an integrated solution so we can sell what I consider outdoor in or indoor out. And we share product roadmaps. We have some things coming down the pipe. And I'll even talk a little bit about how we did the development on the 7181. Uh, and if you are familiar with the 7131 indoor, our enterprise access point, 
the GUI interface is identical on the 7181. We just added all the outdoor features and the meshing capability. And um, you'll, if you're experiencing indoor, the GUI looks almost identical. Uh, different outdoor uh, functionality, but and that's just one of the ways that we're sharing product product roadmap. So that's pretty significant uh, for our customers. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the 802.11n standardization. So the 802.11n standard was developed um, by the IEEE. It was actually ratified in uh, September 11, 2009. So it took about, um, I think it was about seven years under development. Uh, they kept pushing it off. It's basically uh, pretty revolutionary the way uh, 802.11n handles that outdoor Wi-Fi. And now you're going to see 802.11n products that are backwards compatible with uh, legacy. So a very key point in 802.11n, if you have a bunch of BG clients out there, uh, they're actually, uh, will be able to talk to any of your 802.11n products. So it supports legacy products. But the bandwidth and some of the things that I've been seeing uh, outdoors are pretty phenomenal. So you would have seen about two, about two years ago, the consumer access points. Everybody at home had 802.11n access points in their house probably about two years ago. You've seen the enterprise hit just shortly six months later. And now you're going to start to see all the outdoor access points hit, the 802.11n's. And I'm going to teach you about different features you should pay attention to outdoors because indoor propagation and multipath is totally different than outdoors. And I'll be pointing a lot of those features out in 7181 as we go along. So key technology features in 802.11n. Um, we really studied the 802.11n technology and what it meant outdoors, because we had a lot of experience in the um, enterprise market and what happens indoor within with the introduction of the 7131. But we need to study what these effects and what happens outdoors. So these are basically the technology features uh, that require tuning when building outdoor products. MIMO, which means multiple in, multiple out, that's when you start to see a bunch of antennas per radio, two and three antennas per radio now. It's not like a BG node where you had a BG radio and you had one antenna uh, for transmit and receive. You're going to start seeing a bunch of access points with multiple antennas. Spatial multiplexing, you're going to hear a lot about really high data rates in N. Well, to get to those high data rates, you have to get to that second data stream. To get to anything over 150, I think it's 154 megabits per second data rate, you have to get to the second stream. And doing that outdoors is really tough. Packet aggregation, what that means is taking a bunch of small packets, combining them into large package, packets, and then pushing it out. It's really helped video applications and CAD applications. Um, the biggest thing with packet aggregation is it's basically probably the one largest feature in 802.11n, because that will allow you to double your data rate. Uh, most vendors just take the reference design from, from the manufacturers and then just ship it out. We take all the algorithms that were done on the uh, reference design and then tweak it for our particular application, which in the case of 7181 is for outdoors. Uh, maximum ratio combining, people call that MRC gain. Uh, clients, what that means in English is clients can hear better. If you have a uh, three receive antennas, you're likely to hear your uh, legacy clients out there much better than if you only had one receive antenna. You're going to see a bunch of products hit the market that are, I call them one by three, one transmit and three receive, because they think there's only going to be legacy clients around for the next three to five years. From, from a technology perspective, I can tell you it takes three to five years to refresh. You'll notice all your 802.11n platforms, your laptops coming out, they all have the embedded 802.11n uh, Intel chip in it. You're going to start seeing devices start popping over the next, uh, I would say it'll take another two to three years to start seeing all these embedded uh, 802.11n chips because the, the technology and the chip prices will be driving down over time. Uh, their biggest problem they're facing is with the power on the 802.11n. But I've seen two or three phones already hit the market with 802.11n dual stream in them. I've also seen, we've tested the iPad and things like that, which has its own 802.11n chip in it. So you're going to start to see it, and it'll take three to five years for that refresh to happen. So clients can hear better. We, uh, Motorola, took into account low-power devices, medium-power devices, and high-power devices when we do 